Um, I think there have been so many reasons for the vaccine hesitancy. You know, it suggests different factions of the population, you know, have their own reason. I don't think it's a uniform um, uh, one decision that is just standing out to everybody. You can ask um, many people at the same time and they will give you so many different reasons why uh, they have been quite hesitant in wanting to get a vaccine. One that I typically tend to get in the vaccine clinic that I used to, uh, that I run here in Decatur, is um, that some people think that a vaccine has been developed too quickly. Um, and that um, they think that, you know, the, 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 the type of setup of vaccine that we've been using, which is the mRNA, uh, will somehow uh, alter the genetic makeup of uh, the individual. And um, I mean, the, though the technique is a little bit new, it is not entirely new. I think it's, it's been around for a couple of years. It just that <clears throat> um, we have the opportunity now to use it in a wider scale, uh, but the safety and the efficacy is second to none. And that's what I keep assuring everybody that you know the the technique seems to be appears to be new. It's not the normal one that we we are used to, but it's more it's probably more efficacious and um, um, you know more more um, uh, very safe uh, to be used. So whenever I explain to them about this, you know they tend to be a little bit more receptive. But I think there are so many million reasons why people tend to be hesitant. I would address the uh, the political issue, and I have some thoughts for uh, those who are politically expedient and use a vaccine as a wedge issue to further discourage and dissuade individuals from uh, taking the vaccine as a way to uh, creep back into political dominance and relevancy, I would say don't do it. It is unethical, dishonest, and unappealing. And I think it will backfire in the end politically. Do not play political football with this issue. Find another constructive path to become politically viable. You could say the government didn't act fast enough. They, they don't have enough uh, uh, stimulus uh, to put into the economy. I would say they, all politicians become a statesman. Uh, this is a time to come together. The uh, injurious impact of COVID-19 uh, have been felt uh, across the globe. Uh, this is not uh, uh, St. Kitts Nevis Federation issue or uh, uh, Caribbean regional issue. This is a, a global issue and we should really get to come together as a people and uh, to save people lives and uh, our livelihood and economies. So that is what I have to say to those who are being politically expedient. So I, you know, with Jamaica, I think, you know, like there's a, there's a number of reasons, you know, the internet now is, it can be our best friend. It can provide information, but it can also be our demise. Um, there's a lot of political, um, you know, the negative political things that were put into the vaccination, um, especially in America. And so if you're reading the news, you'll see all the, um, the, the, the false information that's been shared about, you know, it's, uh, it, 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 it's the open quotation, the mark of the beast is one of the biggest thing that I hear. And as, you know, as a Christian girl that I grew up in Jamaica, my entire um, you know, Sunday school learning, we talked, you know, they talked about the mark of the beast and that when that's offered to you, you should refuse it. And so to that population, they're thinking, you know, someone's putting something foreign into me. I saw a video recently of someone put in a magnet on their arm and saying that the arm that got the vaccine held on to the magnet while the other arm that didn't get the vaccine didn't. And, you know, so things like that, you know, to, to layman people who don't, um, who, who are basically, you know, feeding off things that are on the internet. If it's on the internet, then they think it's true. 
And so that's why in Jamaica it's important, and just not Jamaica, but around the Caribbean in general, it's important that we are out there and they're hearing voices and they're hearing people that look like them and and are from the same, you know, geographical areas that they're from that say that I got it and I'm okay, my kids got it and we're okay. And we're telling you that you're gonna be okay. So I think sometimes people just want reassurance. They, they don't know what to believe when they hear so many different things on the media. Yeah, you know, the, um, <clears throat> you know, when the COVID really hit, um, it started from, you know, New York, East Coast. Um, <clears throat> we thought in Alabama, it was probably not going to come. Um, and eventually, you know, it was just a matter of time. The, the virus moves with people. Anywhere people move, it's going to follow. Um, so I think we were probably a little bit late to react. Um, but then it's, it, it becomes a nationwide issue. It went everywhere. Now, um, I think Alabama in particular, <clears throat> um, the vaccination has uh, been a little bit prosperous because right from day one, I think there have been a very robust campaign about uh, wanting to get people vaccinated. You have um, the main um, hospital um, authorities going on the television, um, doing uh, community um, um, communications uh, to the leaders in the community, to the schools, to almost everybody that needs to hear about how important the vaccination is and how safe it is. And I think that is what has really driven down to almost everybody and uh, most people have been quite receptive. As I said, the majority of the people that are going to have the vaccine have already been vaccinated. What we are doing now is um, we kind of doing um, drive with a, with, a, with a hospital. There's a bus that is um, from the hospital that would drive to the communities or would drive to the churches or uh, the churches. Um, and now we have in schools being set up for the upcoming school year for the for the kids to be vaccinated. So there are so many little things that we're doing that is really paying off. People who aren't yet vaccinated, um, I understand the hesitancy, I understand your concerns. They're, they are all real. Um, everyone has fears and concerns and they have their own reasons, but um, COVID-19, the actual virus, it, it, it doesn't care about your fears or concerns. It's, it's here. We know what this um, infection does to the individual. It's multi-systemic. It affects you um, in every way possible. Um, your lungs, obviously, but then your hearts, your kidneys. Um, and it can even f um, affect you financially because if you're sick you can't go to work if you're infected here you you have to be in quarantine for several weeks or until you um, test negative so it affects your life in so many ways and then you have long-term complications from this so the vaccine so far I believe close to two billion people in the world has received a vaccine at least one dose of the vaccine um, and the world, um, the actual um, real life effectiveness of the vaccine, like my colleagues have been saying, it's apparent where they are. And we can benefit from that here in St. Kitts, especially since we're just, um, I guess, beginning our um, journey against COVID-19. This is our first real outbreak um, compared to the rest of the world. So we're just starting from the, we're just at the beginning of this at the curve. So I would recommend um, individuals to go get vaccinated. Um, if you're unsure, um, reach out to your doctor. Um, we've, we have uh, many information se sessions going on um, where you can learn about the vaccine. So please um, at least reach out, do your research through these means, and hopefully you will take the vaccine because um, 
it's one of the most important ways that we can move forward and get over this pandemic.